So when you first boot in the Halo Infinite, what are you going to be able to play right now with the Cyber Showdown Operation? Right now for the multiplayer, you have Elevation 24-7 and you also have the Husky Raid Refresh, which only has the new maps for right now. We'll get into that a little bit later in this video, as well as Ranked Team Slayer has come into the game. Well, let's first check out the pass here. We did cover this in a previous video. You get the Ember Breaker coating right here, which looks pretty cool. That's for, I believe, 500 credits to make this pass permanent, as well get the bonus. You see some different kind of backdrops an xp boost another backdrop right there or an emblem i should say which actually looks kind of cool another emblem you get a weapon charm at level five at level six you get another xp boost level seven another emblem level eight another emblem you do get another weapon charm at level nine it's not coming through on the game but hopefully you can see it's like the little ghibli ghibli it's this thing right here okay this is just that now this is all free to keep in mind as well so you get this nice like highlighter green radioactive green looking kind of coating which should be kind of fun on some i'm sure another xp boost and then now once level 12 similar to the previous uh operations we are finally getting into the armor set for the chimera core you get some knee pads here are the chest piece additions right here which actually look kind of good for the core itself now i'm not the biggest fan of the chimera core but you know, it's there for you. Now, this is like a bit of a blade thing. It does match your visor as well, so keep in mind with that. You do have another coating, which is kind of white and purple. Another XP boost. You have the visor right here, which is a cool, like, digital effect. I wish this was animated, dude. This looks like such a, a visor that should be animated, but it isn't, but it looks pretty good at the same time. Uh, purple coating right here. And then at, towards the last two, you get these two shoulder pads, again, that reflect on whatever kind of visor you're utilizing. And then you get the, uh, you get this. Yeah, this is a, that's a helmet, apparently. This, I don't know, to me it makes Seeker look, like, amazing. But yeah, this is a, you get this. Now, a big thing that comes with Halo Infinite is the progression, right? That's going to be tied very much to how you get through this pass. So obviously, your daily challenges is the best way to go about doing that. You do have the, you know, their daily gameplay one of just play matches. You earn XP to progress through. Your challenges right here, you can see that I have not bought into the premium pass because I don't think that coding is worth my 500 credits right there. Plus, especially since I don't have 500 credits. But if you go and check out your upcoming challenges as well, mostly these are just gonna be win matches, complete games, earn score, get a killing three medals, like the most difficult one. I think I have all the challenges right here. And your weekly ultimate reward is gonna be a nameplate right here. And you know we have to look at it. We have to check out the shop. And yeah, the shop is pretty similar to what we saw with the Spirit of Fire operation where you have a big bundle right here. Comes with all that stuff right there for you. And then a lot of the extra customization that you want for, especially your Chimera Core, is gonna be tied behind monetization. Which again, I wish there was just a way for you to earn some in-game credits to be able to buy into something. Like if you just put a lot of time into the game, you can earn credits to then be able to buy some cool armor sets. Like you see with games like Helldivers, for example, but we don't really get that right now in Halo Infinite. Uh, I do find like this one is actually a kind of a fun deal. Right here, this is Weapon Charm, it's a Dimension 20 kind of a dice right there. And uh, yeah, that's kind of fun for like a 150 credits. So it's like if you're a big D&D fan, you might want to pick that up. Now, when it comes to the shop, I'm sure you're wondering, how do you get that really cool weapon model for the Commando? Well, surprisingly, it's not in the big net bundle right here for 3,400 credits. Uh, you do get a lot of armor sets and some coatings and some emblems and things like that. You do get the armor effects, which is armor effect, actually, those look kind of cool, but I'm just not going to drop that kind of money. I don't have that kind of money right now. But uh, it's actually it's in a separate bundle over here for the Grim Gas, if that's how you pronounce it. Bundle right over here. And then you get the weapon model right here, which does look pretty awesome. I do really like that. But again, if you want the weapon model, you kind of have to, well spreading a little extra cash. So this is the map elevation. There's some outside parts we're actually in space, which we'll cover in a little bit later in this video. A lot of it's also interior, but actually the majority of this map is out in space, which can drastically change the gameplay mechanics and also the map design. But first we kind of talk about the inside of the map and a lot of claustrophobic hallways with this map as well. Pretty much every box that you see within the map, it's meant to be used to jump onto something. So whenever you're playing, just make sure when you see a box, you're like, okay, that's a spot of elevation I can utilize to get to a higher point to get that height advantage. And if we keep moving along from the spawn point, you get put into this long hallway right here, which you see the quantum translocator. Of course, if in social modes, things are subject to change. There is another outway out into the space area and a heat wave again subject to change of course there is a little bit of an elevator right here so expect people to kind of be flying out to get to this point right here and then you have a big open area 
on this side of the map, which definitely will be a major point of contention when it comes to interior fights in the map. I get major containment vibes from Halo Rage on this one, just mainly because of, like the outside space environment as well as like the more hallway focused gameplay on the interior side of the map. But let's get out into space. And there is a bit of a gripe I have with the space side of things. So just take a moment and listen to when I walk into space. And now walk back out into the interior, back out into space. There's really no audio cue to letting you know that like, oh, you've gone into space kind of thing. Because even when you jump around, you can see that, yeah, your low G area right here, which is drastically going to change the gameplay of it. You shoot, audio still sounds the same as that right there. So one thing I wish there was like a bit of an audio cue. I think if there is, I can continue where you have a bit more of a muffled sound effect when you go into space, like in Reach when it comes to those map designs. Where in this infinite, it's just kind of the same thing. You don't really notice anything different. Like all your audio is still crystal clear. I mean, technically, I don't think there should be any audio from a gun, right? Because, well, there is no air in space for it to reverberate. But, dang, hey, that's technicality. This is a video game, obviously. But, yeah, so this is what the majority of the map right here is going to be. There are three major levels as well. You can use different low-G areas to kind of just hop around the map. So you have different expectations of where people are going to come from. And it's all signified through these blue lines. So you see right here, regular G, go through the blue corridor, and it's low-G right here. This is going to be another great social map as well, just because of how different it's going to be playing out right like this low g area which is i thought it was gonna be much more of a gimmick this is gonna be a significant part of the map which i think is gonna be great certainly helps mix things up a bit and also help maps stand out a bit more as well there's this really downstairs area right here where you can go grab a sword and then you can go check around to grab the grapple shot which can be crucial for that spot right there let's go through this lift right here I think this is going to be a teleporter. Yeah, this is going to be a teleporter. Yeah, I put you right there here. <laughs> now, if I remember correctly, there should be another teleporter down at the bottom of this map. I love the different elevation changes right here. Actually, there's a teleporter right there and the teleporter over here, which should put you more towards this side of the map over here. If I remember correctly, where I saw a vent was. Yep, put you right into here. So if you're in the interiors and you see this, just expect someone just kind of pop out of nowhere. I mean, it's kind of expected, right, with this kind of map design. There are also little random shoots like this throughout the map as well. So just kind of expect people to kind of come out of nowhere, essentially. But that's kind of the fun part about more social map design. You can go a little wild when it comes to angles of attack you can watch out for. You can also make crazy jumps like this across the map, probably. Maybe a little bit of a grapple shot. There we go. And don't worry, there are limitations to the grapple shot on this map. You can't climb to like the top of the towers like this because then you'll hit a kale barrier, which is very important. Oh, and there's also a pelican. I'm sure you saw that plenty of times on the previews of this map. It doesn't really have anything in here, but there is a little bit of a Easter egg right here of the pilot. Just kind of chilling. A little pilot plushie right there for you. Let's do a brief overview of the Husky Raid maps that came into the game. First thing you notice about this map formation, Forerunner stuff. But look at this. They put AI in the map and there's a side battle happening along with it. When I jumped in, I was like, what's all these explosion sounds? I'm like, oh, it's actually a full on AI battle happening. That's awesome. This map is a little bit more than just a straight hallway, which you might see at first. There are these outside edges on the left and right side of the main hallway, which you can get some quick snipes on people or just kind of get a little angle to surprise people. Don't forget you can fall off the map so definitely watch out for that. And then you have the main hallway, which there is a Warhog right here. I wonder if you can move that. Probably not. That's yeah, probably a static object, just so then you can't just completely beam people when they're trying to cross the bridge here. And it's a symmetrical side thing over here as well on the other side of the map. These uh, barriers, these barriers right here do act as a bit of a cover. We can kind of sit in the back and maybe get a visual of like where people are coming from over here because you can't shoot through these either. There's this teleporter right here, which puts you back over to the other side of the map. So then if you're kind of spawn trapped or something, you can kind of go through these different teleports, kind of put you right back into the middle or something like that. One thing I wish the map wasn't as dark, but I guess it really kind of helps the different kind of weaponry to really shine through. Like look at how much those weapons really glow when you're shooting. So it's going to be a nice visual show when you're playing on formation. Next map we have here is Merchant's Square, which you can probably assume by just the name and the visual style. It's kind of a renaissance, maybe like 1700s style looking map, which definitely a nice change of pace. This map's going to be rather chaotic as it's pretty tight. It's pretty much like you got this one hallway angle right over here, which gives you like this car, kind of give you a little bit of cover to kind of peek around. Funny thing is there is like this little brute right here that they utilize to kind of cover up in like old school, like what medieval armor, renaissance armor kind of stuff. So kind of fun stuff there and then over on the other side you do have like this little jump up to get yourself into the base as well so it's not so straightforward there's a little spawn point right here but i have a feeling this map is where you're going to see a lot of kill streaks happening because you can pretty much just post up right on the top of this map right here right 
peak this angle where people are going to be spawning from that side right there or jumping out from that angle. So it's going to be, uh, this is going to be a bloodbath map for sure. Can we also take a moment to appreciate the ship that they made as well as these gigantic monuments as well to kind of just add to the atmosphere of the map? Dude, the person who forged this is absolutely incredible. Like even out in the distance, you see little houses. Like it just creates this atmosphere that there's something more beyond the map than just like this two lane chaos. Next map we're talking about is Outlook and I'm not talking about the email app. I'm talking about this map in particular. This is much more your traditional style Husky Raid map, but just one long haul you got some barriers right here but you can't really utilize it a whole lot to kind of get peak an angle maybe across the way or over here or something but that's about it really giant pillar in the middle for some cover to get yourself so you can push a little bit more forward but other than that it is basically a straight line there's a back area over here for you to safely respawn back in which is always very important when it comes to a husky raid map it sucks getting killed right off the of spawn you know but you know, it is what it is sometimes with the mud. I mean, that's kind of part of the deal, right? Again, great job just kind of creating more of the atmosphere of the map as well. Kind of a desolate location, outpost in the middle of nowhere, or an outlook, if you will. Here's another rather straightforward map in the middle of a desert, and it's called Pharaoh. This is pretty straightforward. You got just a simple hallway right down the middle. From each spawn point, you do have a bit of an angle like this to kind of look out, so you can kind of chance to pick people off with some form of cover to kind of get yourself a little bit of space to push forward here. But when you move out like this, you're pretty much like in the thick of everything right here you do have a little bit of a out spot right here where you can kind of just like get a little bit of an angle on players that you would not be expecting but uh, for the most part it's a symmetrical map for husky raid pretty straightforward and uh well expect to blow a lot of stuff up the next map we have here is called urban raid and this map is another straightforward map there are some different points of elevation which we'll talk about a little bit later in this little segment but first of all you can see there is a little bit of a back area so if you're kind of getting pushed you can kind of fall back a little bit to keep pick out some players to be able to push forward now you can get up here obviously but you can also get over here as well utilizing these planters you can jump up like this you get that nice little height elevation as well but then you can also utilize this middle box right here, jump up on this platform like so. And you can kind of just work your way around. You can kind of just walk around each side here as well. Again, utilize it as much as you want. So you can try to get a little bit of an angle on people. So you can kind of like sneak around the peak, peak corner like this, stuff like that. But uh, that's really about all it is for Urban Raid as well, symmetrical as well. This is madness, you better believe it. Now this map will not be playable right now, but eventually will become part of the operation of this Husky Raid refresh, and it is Rujaya, if I pronounce that correctly. This is probably the most intricate of all of the Husky Raid maps, at least like the most confusing with all the different types of angles. So you push up through here, you'll see like these little pedestals, you cannot jump on these, these will not interact with the player, so that's good to know, so you don't have little cheeky people camping up on top of this. You have this little hallway right here, which is kind of interesting. You can kind of sneak up into the center of the map as well. Of course, you have the center stairs right there. You can go check out. But when you do check out the middle stairs, you might see like this little ledge. You might think you'd be able to jump on. You cannot jump on that. So you can't hide in the little corners, which honestly is good for Husky Raid. And this is the map, dude. Like this looks absolutely incredible. Oh my goodness. I love this design so much. When you push towards the center of the map, there are these two different outlook locations right here. Really just so you can kind of catch yourself a little bit of a breather from the intensity that's going to happen and kind of catch an angle of people coming out of the spawn right here. The little curb slide off that. There you go. And this kind of puts you into the symmetrical side of the map as well over here. Again, this can be probably once you get into like this part of the map, you might be able to get some crazy multi kills with people spawning over here or over here even but yeah this map looks absolutely incredible uh definitely something i'm looking forward to when it does come to the game eventually if you guys enjoyed these type of videos a like and a subscribe is always appreciated and i'll catch you on the next one peace out